This stop is Samsung World Trade Center Seoul. The doors are on your left. 광일병원 건강검진 척추센터로 가실 분은 삼성역 2번 출구로 나가시기 바랍니다. After our long flight to Seoul, Cathy and I were happy to go and explore the old city and the castles and treasures of Seoul before examinations started. Hard not to be impressed with our Korean colleagues taking the exam, the written exam in English, taking us out for wonderful meals. All these clever medics who had mastered so many things already and wanted to carry on studying. And there's saying our great host couldn't have done more for us. And we enjoyed seeing his splendid clinic. Sang seems to be everything. An orthopedic surgeon, a plastic surgeon, a chiropractor, an AK diplomat, a diplomat of chiropractic neurology. Here's his physical therapy section in his clinic. And here, each one who was examined on the practicals was taken was photographed with us. It was fun. It was hard work. Here's Jung and Anissa. His... After the week of examining, my fellow examiner Francois from Quebec and I had a couple of days to explore Seoul and I got to the demilitarized zone. Here you see these locks and messages that are so popular around the world, especially here in Seoul. We went up to the Seoul Tower take a wonderful view of the city and this must be the urinal with the best view in the world.
soul has utterly transformed from the days when I was there 40 years ago. Well, we took a trip up, as I said, to the demilitarized zone. Here's the railway station that ends there with a promise one day it'll link up South Korea with the rest of Asia. And this bridge is where the prisoners were handed over. Road to nowhere. <laughs> Uh, which is a 50 miles north of Seoul, is where they finally signed the agreement, the armistice agreement, in 53, after two years of arguing about prisoners of war, etc. You see these guys have to wear sunglasses so they don't catch eyes and fight with the North Korean guards. We're actually technically in North Korea just here. Let's, let's in Seoul, everything is bling. One of their big exports, apart from Samsung, are boy bands. K-pop is very big in Asia, something we may not be aware of, but here they are. All the boys with their makeup. It's the big glitzy city. Here you can see the old Japanese imperial town hall overshadowed by the new wonderful Korean town hall like a great wave crashing over the Japanese one to blot it out and blot out that painful period of Japanese imperialism in Korea. Here we are in Gangman, real Gangman style. This is what they're putting up these days. A far cry from what I remember from before. And so we say goodbye to Korea for the start and I'll head off to Japan, to uh, Vietnam, to Nghe con chim cúc thu kể nó lên một câu rằng có một nàng lạc trong rừng tìm trong rừng tìm trong rừng chiếc khăn I came to really like Vietnam and, and have an immense respect for the Vietnamese people. I spent several days in Hanoi on my own and, and uh, this is a lovely, rather charming loudspeakerized music coming from the school just below my window in my hotel in Hanoi. And uh, hearing it each morning as I was struggling to send the seminar slides to, si um, to um, Korea, and I, I rather got fond of it. And, uh, it cheered me up at a, at a slightly um, strange time when I was suddenly in a new city on my own, a bit too busy half the time to get out and explore it. I enjoyed wandering around the city, exploring the old town, and sitting by the side of the street eating noodles here. Met a young Australian traveller called Matthew, uh, and we shared a supper together. 
and here suddenly came Shanti and Lee out of the blue into my lonely traveler's life for a brief trip. These young women were, and one or two men, were students coming to the, the Palace of Literature to be photographed ready for their graduation later in the summer. On Saturday morning, I went to the rather splendid Vietnamese Museum of Women. I was touched by artist Dang Ai Vye, who travelled 5,000 kilometres all over the different provinces between 2010 and 2012 um, to record the heroic mothers of Vietnam, the women who had lost so many brothers, sons, husbands. And this is what she travelled on, her little scooter throughout the country. Here she is probably talking to one of the uh, Politburo members. And this is our heroine, who uh, must have brought a lot of uh, confirmation and uh, happiness to these women now getting into their last years as she recorded their lives. Anh Tư Trần Thông Trần Thông ơi Chàng hái cho em đi Đầy hồ sen trắng nở Anh Tư Đầy hồ đầy trắng A key feature of Vietnamese life now is on two wheels Everybody, if they can afford it, has a bicycle or even a scooter, and most things are carried um, by two wheels. You see whole families on there, and vast uh, burdens carried on, on small scooters. It's impressive, if a little bit uh, scary at times, as is crossing a road, uh, wading through a swirling mass of scooters for the first time is somewhat nerve-wracking, but after a while it's, it's okay. Here's my lunch being prepared, my street food, and it wasn't at all bad. I was interested to see whether there were any people still actually practicing Buddhism in, in the real sense of the, of the term, rather than just as it is a, a folk uh, religion going through the motions. And I was lucky through friends and friends to meet Li Tan Ha, here she is. And we went out for coffee and talked about uh, what it was like to practice Buddhism in a communist country where the secret police come to your retreats and can't quite make out what the hell's going on and they get very anxious although they're quite happy for people to go to the pagoda and uh, light incense here you can see the mausoleum uh, used to bolster up the whole image of Ho Chi Minh as the father of the nation One day I came out of the mausoleum to see Uncle Ho and uh, found a taxi on a motorbike. Here he is, Chan, 50 year old with two children, who took me on the back of his motorbike very carefully and all around town. Here we are at uh, the Hanoi Hilton, rather terrible prison used by the French and then later by the Vietnamese or uh, the Americans. Sin 
còn tiếng gương khô không còn lo chữ chiến lo nước sẽ bình yên trong thế I didn't really want to travel around Vietnam solely on my own, like old days. So I was quite happy to join a small group with Exodus, uh, a friendly bunch of people, there were about 10 of us, and we had some fun. Um, and here we are at uh, the old cabin, <laughs> and dressing up in Hue for a dinner, and they do for tourists, I guess, of course. And, but it was fun, and yours truly, Lydia and my friend here were willing to be king and queen for the day, or emperor and emperor for the day.
hundreds of tailor shops compete uh, to produce a suit for you a day. And here was mine. I was rather pleased with it. They came in handy. And I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. way out then will be to negotiate not as victors but as an honorable people who lived up to their pledge to defend democracy and did the best they could this is Walter Cronkite <laughs> In 1971, at the height of the Vietnam War, I flew over the country um, from Thailand to Hong Kong. 
if I'd have had a little bit more money, I would have flown into Saigon just for the buzz, just to see what it was all about, having listened to endless daily and nightly reports about the war most of my teenage and, and early 20s. So it was quite a buzz to be in Saigon now, 40 years later, and also encouraging to see its transformation back into a bustle in the city. Here's the water puppets, and there's the famous Continental Hotel, Hotel Continental, where Graham Greene, Somerset Maugham, and all the journalists hang out. And there's some Graham Greene's old flat. Now it's time to head back to do my shtick in Seoul. Can you picture?
Coffee shop here called Poppy. Yeah. yeah. Five one seventeen, Jingu Army. Oh no, what was it? 